China is building the world's biggest dam in Tibet. This dam would make its three gorges dam smaller. We're going to visit the Three Gorges Dam. It's the largest hydropower dam in the world. Have you ever imagined sailing through the clouds where mountains stand tall, but ships move effortlessly above them? It sounds like something out of a fantasy novel, doesn't it? However, in China, this isn't just a dream. It is, in fact, a breathtaking reality. A place where water defies gravity and ships float over valleys like a magician's trick. It all started with a vision to harness the unstoppable force of nature. Remember to hit the subscribe button and join us in exploring this fairy tale masterpiece China has finally brought to life. Early Pursuit of Hydropower Dominance China's obsession with harnessing its mighty rivers began long before the world recognized its intelligent supremacy. The country, home to some of the world's largest and most turbulent rivers, realized that these waters carried life and the power to light up cities, drive industries, and, importantly, move ships through impossible landscapes. However, to achieve this, they had first to tame the rivers. The turning point came with the construction of the massive Three Gorges Dam on the Yangtze River, a project that symbolized China's rise as an engineering powerhouse. Approved in 1992 and completed in 2006, this dam wouldn't just be another hydroelectric station, it would be the largest of its kind on Earth. Standing at about 185 meters in height, and stretching 2,335 meters in width, this power dam could generate a staggering 22.5 gigawatts of electricity. However, more than its power, it became a gateway that allowed ships to bypass dangerous rapids and travel deep into the heart of China. Yet the Three Gorges was only the beginning, as China's ambition didn't stop at one river. It spread across the nation, from the Lankang to the Wu River. Each dam became a stepping stone in a greater plan to turn water bodies into highways, not just to serve as a barrier. China is reported to operate over 98,000 dams by 2024, producing about 30% of the world's hydroelectric power. Hydropower became the backbone of the nation's energy strategy. But more than that, it became the foundation for something more extraordinary. However, building dams came with challenges beyond engineering, as they caused numerous floods in towns displaced millions, and sparked heated debates. Yet for the Chinese government, the vision was clear. These dams would serve as lifelines, highways, and connectors between its numerous isolated regions. From these early projects, China wasn't just producing electricity, but paving a water highway across mountains. Yet as they built higher and higher, the rivers refused to cooperate, and ordinary locks were no longer enough. The mountains demanded something revolutionary. How do you make a ship climb a mountain? The answer lay in a different kind of elevator that didn't carry people, but entire vessels. What do you think? Could taming rivers become the key to sailing above mountains, traditional dams across China? Before China dared to lift ships over mountains, it mastered the art of taming rivers through dams. Thousands of them, each with a unique purpose, shape, and impact. These structures didn't just generate power. They became the backbone of China's water management flood control, and agricultural development. From towering concrete giants to hidden embankments, China's dams are as diverse as the rivers they command. One of the most common dams in China is the Gravity Dam, which uses sheer weight to hold back water. They are typically solid concrete, and their broad bases can withstand the massive upstream pressure. A prime example is the colossal Ziluodu Dam, completed in 2013 on the Jinsha River. Standing at 285.5 meters, it is the third largest hydroelectric dam in the world. The Siloadu generates over 13,860 megawatts of electricity annually and helps regulate water flow downstream, reducing flood risks in more populated areas. However, when gravity alone isn't enough, China employs a curved masterpiece called the Arch Dam to distribute water pressure into the surrounding canyon walls. Among these, the Baitan Dam became functional in 2021 and stands out as an engineering marvel. Built across the Jinsha River that separates Sichuan and Yunnan provinces, Baihatan measures 289 meters, making it the second highest arch dam in the world. What is remarkable about Baihatan is the fact that it produces a whopping 16,000 megawatts, enough to power the entire province for one year. The double curvature arch structure of the dam is an engineering feat that combines strength and efficiency. In regions with wide riverbeds and less steep terrain, 
China turns to embankment dams built from earth, rock, and clay. These dams may not tower like their concrete cousins, but they cover vast areas, forming massive reservoirs for irrigation and safe drinking water. The Danjiangku Dam on the Han River is a typical example. First constructed in 1958 and expanded in 2010, this embankment dam plays an important role in China's South to North Water Diversion Project, which supplies water to cities like Beijing and Tianjin. It also generates 900 megawatts of hydroelectric power while holding back a 29 billion cubic meters reservoir, a vital source for agriculture in northern China. However, China doesn't stop at the surface. It has also led the way in the construction of underground dams, an example of which is in the deserts of Xinjiang and Inner Mongolia. Underground dams, built below ground level, lock up the groundwater so it cannot evaporate. They generate a constant volume of water for farming. Less visible as they are, these dams are also crucial in preventing desertification and water conservation where drought is rampant. Yet, as remarkable as these dams are, they face many limitations. Gravity and arch dams are formidable but restricted to deep valleys. On the other hand, embankment dams are quite effective but require vast land areas. How about multi-purpose dams? While powerful, these types of dams struggle with bottlenecks in shipping due to their time-consuming lock systems. Now, this is where China's ambition soared beyond the ordinary. So what do you think? How do you raise ships above mountains where ordinary dams can't reach? The engineering breakthrough. To conquer towering water heights, Chinese engineers turned to an invention that had existed for centuries, but was now reimagined on a much larger scale, ship lifts. Unlike traditional locks, which raised water levels step by step, ship lifts carried entire vessels vertically in giant water-filled chambers. However, as astonishing as this idea was, it wasn't born in China. The earliest known form of a ship lift dates back to England in 1796, with the construction of the Ketley Canal. However, the world's most famous early modern ship lift, known as the Falkirk Wheel, was constructed in Scotland. This engineering wonder, standing 35 meters tall, connects the 4th and Clyde Canal with the Union Canal, replacing a series of 11 locks with a single rotating structure that lifts boats 24 meters up in the air. Inspired by a Celtic axe and a ship's propeller, its unique design moved vessels with astonishing efficiency. Yet, while the Falkirk wheel in Scotland was a marvel of design, it moved ships across a moderate height, not too high. China needed something far more powerful, an elevator for not a few meters, but hundreds of feet. So, the race for innovation began. Their first breakthrough came with the Three Gorges Dam Ship Lift, completed in 2016. It reduced transit time from over four hours using locks to just 40 minutes, creating a massive smooth sail for commercial shipping on the Yangtze. However, China wasn't satisfied. The real challenge was beyond the Yangtze, into regions where single lifts wouldn't be possible. Back with the dam project, engineers introduced not one but three ship lifts, which worked together to raise vessels by an astonishing 653 feet. The first lift raised the ship 236 feet, the second added another 417 feet, and a third lowered it on the other side of the mountain. Unlike the Falkirk wheel, the Three Gorges lift system wasn't about elegance, but raw power capable of lifting ships weighing up to 1,800 tons. So why did China choose ship lifts over traditional locks for mountainous terrain? The answer was speed and safety. A single ship lift could transport vessels in minutes, making water transport as efficient as a highway. However, the complexity of its operation makes this engineering even more astonishing. Each lift is equipped with seismic protection to withstand earthquakes because in China's mountainous regions, nature isn't just a challenge, it's a threat. Nonetheless, the real magic was how they connected these ship lifts across mountains, through tunnels, and over bridges, transforming rugged landscapes into smooth waterways. Can you imagine ships climbing mountains like elevators, soaring through peaks and valleys? How did they connect these heights? Let's get right into it. Bridging the heights, in the heart of Guizhou province where cliffs and rushing waters collide, stands the Jelantan Dam, completed in 2009 after six years of grueling construction. However, its true marvel isn't just in its towering 760-foot height or 1,830-foot length. Instead, it lies in how it defies gravity, carrying ships up a mountain through a lift system. 
unlike anything the world has seen before. This triple lift system was born out of necessity. The Wu River, which the Jelantan Dam interrupts, descends dramatically, creating a water level difference of up to 653 feet, almost as high as a 66-story skyscraper. A single ship lift would have been too slow and dangerous for such an extreme height, so engineers devised something bold, bringing three interconnected lifts together to move vessels up and over the dam. However, building three massive ship lifts was only half the challenge. The other half was linking them across the towering Gijo Mountains, where sharp cliffs and deep gorges made ordinary water channels impossible to create. So how did China connect these lifts into a continuous pathway? The answer lies in a remarkable network of aqueducts, tunnels, and mountain waterways that turn nature's obstacles into part of the solution. Known as the Jelantan Aqueduct, this open-air water bridge spans over 1.4 miles and was built to guide ships from the first to the second lift. The aqueduct, completed in 2008, was a construction and perseverance success. The engineers dug deep foundations into the mountains and protected the channel with high-strength, concrete capable of withstanding water pressure and earthquakes. The aqueduct is so precise that water loss through seepage is kept to less than 0.5%, an astonishing achievement for an open channel of its length. How did they carve a path through solid mountains? Tunnel boring machines made this possible. These massive cylindrical drills cut through rock like a hot knife through butter. For the Jelantan project, China used two 13-meter diameter TBMs weighing over 1,500 tons to dig through 20 meters of rock daily. The tunnels they created from this drilling stretch over three kilometers, forming a watery highway between the second and third lifts. These tunnels are lined with seismic resistant steel and outfitted with sensors that monitor shifts in temperature and pressure. Engineers constructed the tunnels with a gentle gradient to allow gravity to aid the water flow, facilitating smooth navigation between their paths. In addition, a complex ventilation system provides fresh air to the tunnels, keeping them clear of humidity buildup. Nonetheless, opening up these channels wasn't so much a question of construction, it was also a question of cooperation with nature. As Gijou is renowned for its extensive karst landscape, permeable limestone that can collapse under pressure. When the second tunnel was dug in 2007, the engineers hit an underground cavern and the building partly collapsed. To solve this, they injected the surrounding rock with over 200,000 cubic meters of grout to solidify the area and prevent further cave-ins. Between the lifts, the water flow is carefully controlled by a series of automated sluice gates, which adjust water levels in real time based on the volume of vessels. The gates are operated from a central control room using 5G technology, which allows engineers to respond instantly to changes in water pressure or unexpected traffic surges. However, China didn't stop with functional engineering. They also made it beautiful. The aqueducts are lined with LED lighting, transforming them into glowing ribbons through the mountains at night, a sight that has become a point of attraction. Tourists often gather to watch cargo vessels glide silently above the valleys as their reflections shimmer on the aqueduct's surface. Can you imagine it? Ships glide through tunnels and over bridges, carving a silent path across the mountains. What's more astonishing is how this system, built for transportation, became a lifeline for energy and industry. Amid all these, what benefits did these bring to the province and regions around which it was built? Let's find out more. The economic impact. Villages that once took days to reach by winding mountain roads were now connected by a waterway where goods and passengers could flow freely. Shipping time from Guizhou to ports on the Yangtze River was cut by more than 30%, fueling the region's economic growth. The Jelantan Dam wasn't built just to lift ships over mountains, but to lift an entire region out of isolation. For centuries, Guizhou province, with its rugged peaks and deep valleys, struggled with transportation as roads were narrow, and moving goods across the region was slow and costly. However, with the completion of the dam and its ship lifts in 2009, everything changed. Suddenly, the Wu River became more than a waterway. It became a commercial highway connecting Guizhou to the Yangtze River's powerful trade routes. One of the most immediate impacts was on cargo transportation. Before the ship lifts, the steep drop of the river made it impossible for large vessels to pass through. Nowadays, ships carrying anything from coal to construction materials easily navigate the mountains. Up to 2023, the Three Gorges Dam Waterway had logged more than 2.9 million tons of cargo for a calendar year, 
a record for an area of the country that was once considered too remote for any sizable shipping venture. This shift didn't just move goods faster, it moved them cheaper. Shipping by water costs only a fraction of rail or road transport, especially for heavy goods. With multiple vessels moving through the triple lift system daily, the region saw a sharp reduction in heavy trucks on its mountainous roads. By 2021, freight traffic on regional highways had dropped by 35%, reducing congestion and damage to the road. The Jelantan Waterway cut the shipping time from Guizhou to Shanghai by nearly 40%, making it more profitable for local producers to reach international markets. The effects rippled through the economy with industries such as cement manufacturing, timber, and agricultural exports seeing a quick rise in their output as transportation was now faster. However, the Gelantin Dam was not just about moving cargo, but also about generating renewable energy. Built with a hydroelectric power station at its core, the dam produces up to 3,000 megawatts annually to power nearly 2 million homes. Unlike fossil fuels, hydroelectric power produces no direct carbon emissions, helping China reduce its reliance on coal and meet its ambitious climate goals. By 2022, the Jelantin power station contributed to a 10% reduction in Guizhou's carbon footprint. Moreover, the dam became part of the Yangtze River Economic Belt Initiative, a national strategy launched in 2016 to drive economic development through sustainable use of the Yangtze and its tributaries. Guizhou's newfound access to this powerful economic artery made it a critical node in China's internal trade network. How does the Gelantin Dam compare to China's greatest engineering titan, the Three Gorges Dam? Let's see how they stack up against each other. The Race Against Three Gorges Dam If you think the Gelantin Dam is a masterpiece, then the Three Gorges Dam is a legend. Towering over the Yangtze River in Hubei Province, this breathtaking dam holds nearly every record, from being the largest hydroelectric station, highest power output, and largest engineering footprint globally. Completed in 2006, the Three Gorges Dam spans an astonishing 2,335 meters, with a height of 185 meters, and produces an astonishing 22.5 gigawatts of power. While the Gelatan Dam boasts a powerful five-stage lock system and a 113-meter ship lift, it is no match to the extreme elevation of the Three Gorges Dam's 653-foot triple lift system. The Three Gorges ship lift, completed in 2016, remains the largest single lift elevator for ships in the world, capable of raising vessels weighing up to 2,500 tons. However, it lifts these ships only once to a height of 113 meters, which, although impressive, cannot be compared to the three-stage climb at the gorges. The Three Gorges produces over 100 billion kilowatt hours annually to power cities like Shanghai and Chongqing. By 2023, over 159 million tons of cargo had reportedly passed through its lock system since inception, making the Yangtze River one of the busiest inland waterways in the world. So what's next? If China has already mastered the art of taming rivers and conquering mountains, what new frontiers will they challenge next? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. If you found this fascinating, like and subscribe to the channel. You can also watch the other videos on your screen.